22 says this, May your unfailing love be with us, even as we put our hope in you. Kids, let's sing this out tonight, that we put all our hope and all our trust Kids Church, welcome back to Bible Time with me, Samantha Zuniga. I hope you guys are all doing well, and please close your eyes and bow your heads so we can get this sermon started. Thank you, God, for always being there for us. Thank you for always keeping us safe and giving us the opportunity to learn more about your word. Bless the service that we are going to have and open our hearts to receive the word you have prepared for us today. In the name of Jesus, we all say, Amen. So today, we are finishing up our little series of Fruit of the Spirit, and we are ending it with faithfulness. So what exactly is faithfulness? Many of us have been faithful throughout many parts of our lives, whether it's trusting and knowing that God will move in your life or in the lives of other people. But something we must always try to remember is that only God is truly faithful emphasis on truly. One definition of faithfulness is that it's the act of being true to your word or promise. It's the ability to follow through on promises or commitments that you make. The Bible repeats again and again about the never-ending faithfulness of God. So any faithfulness that we try to have on our own by our own power and not the power that comes from God, that's the type of self-made faithfulness and self-made faithfulness will always fall short of god's standard 
The Bible offer, offers several examples of faithfulness, first and, form, first and foremost of the character of God. But there are many other people in the Bible that teach what it means to be faithful. Now we go straight into point number one. When we are faithful, our faithful God will take care of all our needs. Again, when we are faithful, our faithful God will take care of all our needs. Usually when Christians define faithfulness, it goes into a talk about being obedient to God and to doing what he says. This, of course, is true because, loyal, because being loyal to God's commands is one of the ways we show and develop greater faithfulness in our own lives. But if we turn to Hebrews, Hebrews 11, the writer gives a definition of what faith or faithfulness is. It reads like this, Faith is being sure of what we hope for. It is being sure of what we do not see. An example of this is that even though we cannot physically see God with our own eyes, our faith is strong enough to know that He is there at all times with us through our walk with Him. And like I said before, when Christians define faithfulness, obedience usually comes up in the conversation. Faithfulness is not only obeying simply because God said so, but it is obeying with the hope and the belief that not only is what God said best, but that whatever you have faith in will happen as well. And now I'm going to tell you a story about a woman named Ruth. This little part of the story comes from Ruth 1.16. It reads like this, But Ruth said, Do not urge me to leave you or to return from following you. For where you go, I will go, and where you lodge, I will lodge. Your people shall be my people, and your God, my God. Ruth right here is talking to her mother-in-law, Naomi. After her husband died, Ruth could have chosen to go off on her own and create a new life for herself. But instead, she chose to remain with her mother-in-law, Naomi, and followed her to her home country. You see... Ruth didn't know how things would totally turn out or plan out. She just knew she needed to be faithful to the family that God had given her. And because of her faithfulness, God took care of the rest. Faithfulness can often cause putting others first and staying loyal and true to family, friends, and other loved ones. It means trusting that when we are faithful, we honor God and allow Him to work in our lives. And then we, when we allow God to work in our lives, our self-made faithfulness that relies on ourselves slowly goes away and gets replaced by God's powerful faithfulness, the one that we can count on for sure. Our God's faithfulness can be put into our lives by the power of His Spirit. Then, this changes the way we act, we have the way we speak and move in the world to be more like Him. It is not our faithfulness, but it is a fruit of God's Spirit taking root and growing within us. Fruit of the Spirit. Now we go straight into point number two, faithfulness and relationships. So this is a story about Jonathan and David. This takes place because David was chosen by God to be king after Saul. It reads like this, And Jonathan, Saul's son, rose and went to David in Horish, and strengthened his hand in God. And he said to him, Do not fear, for the hand of Saul, my father, shall not find you. You shall be king over Israel, and I shall be next to you. Saul, my father, also knows this and the two of them made a covenant before the Lord that was found in 1 Samuel 23 16 through 18 the story of Jonathan and David is a sweet reminder of what it means to be faithful friends Jonathan could have easily been jealous of David who was chosen by God to proceed his father as king even though Saul didn't want David to be king he could have compared himself to David the courageous man who seemed to be getting all the attention, but he didn't. Instead, Jonathan vowed to remain by David's side no matter what. He promised to support him 
and to cheer him on through all of his successes. There will be many times in life when we are David, the chosen one. In those seasons, it's a gift to have a friend like Jonathan to faithfully support us. There may be other times when we get to be a Jonathan to our friends, choosing to be present and faithful as they shine. And there are a variety and a diversity of examples of faithfulness throughout the whole entire Bible, Old Testament through the New Testament. Some examples are that we see faithfulness can mean following what God tells us to do, like Noah building an ark or Moses leading his people to freedom. Faithfulness can mean going to where God told you to go because you have faith in God into taking you to that place and to keep you safe. This, is a, this can be an example of Abraham when he left his home as a very old man, like very old man, and relocated his family to an entirely different country because he had faith in God to keep him safe. Faithfulness can mean loving who God calls us to love. This is what Ruth did as she stuck by her mother-in-law, Naomi, in her time of need. Throughout all these examples, it becomes clear that faithfulness is shown in a variety of ways. That variety is also in your life, where you think about times you needed the faithfulness of God in your life. So as we close, our prayer today is to ask God to show that faithfulness to us. Every single moment of our lives, He is faithful. Every single moment. So close your eyes and bow your heads. Lord, we thank you for this service. Our prayer today is that you show us a variety of examples of your faithfulness throughout our lives and throughout other people's lives as well. Allow us to have faithfulness in our relationships, friendships, in our hard times and in our sad times. And may that faithfulness be from you and not ourselves. We love you and we thank you. And in your precious name we all say, Amen. Thank you guys so much for being here today and make sure you guys stay safe, wear your mask when you go out in public and I'll see you guys next time. Bye! Now kids, before the night ends, let's worship our God with this last song. Too late.
see you next week.